Great. So let's take a look at the um, kind of vernacular architecture. Um, <clears throat> you know, some of them looks more familiar, and I'm going to kind of move faster. For example, um, the courtyard dwelling in Beijing, and uh, you know, courtyard house called the Si He Yuan, right? The um, <clears throat> or the He Yuan style, you know, that focus on a courtyard. Uh, there is also the so-called Tianjin style. Tianjin means sky well. This is especially for the kind of a more uh, rainy area in South China, where the courtyard is so small that it looks more like a well uh, carved out of a block of architecture. So that's the, uh, the sky well. Uh, house. Another is called the Zuqun style, which is grouped courtyard, like this one. Right? Uh, so the He Yuan style and the Tianjin style usually belong to um, in you know single family house. But the Zuqun style or grouped courtyards, it like apartment building. Uh, it is multi-family. It has a collective central courtyard for um, multiple families. And that one is primarily in the south, uh, well, not there, here, uh, southeastern Fujian province. And the Tianjin style is very popular in south China, in, in, in these areas. And the He Yuan style, primarily in north China. Uh, so north, south, and uh, southeast. That that um, kind of a grouped courtyard. <clears throat> uh, the Beijing courtyard house called Si He Yuan um, is the prototype for the Forbidden City. You know, to some extent, the Forbidden City is a giant uh, Si He Yuan, a giant courtyard house. Um, you know, common Beijing folks live in a courtyard house like that, um, which features courtyard. Um, but like the Forbidden City, the southern courtyard, which is called the front courtyard, is mostly used for semi-public activities, uh, like the main building, uh, often used as the, the kind of a living room, but also a family shrine center, uh, worshiping for ancestral tablets are usually in, in this building. So it's like a, a, a household a religious center. And then the backyard is for um, residential purposes. Just like in the Forbidden City, you know, the front three halls are for a uh, court hearing and the rear three halls are for the re residential um, activity uh, for the emperor. So they share the same spatial logic and they also share the same kind of hierarchical organization of space. Uh, like the head of the household would live in this building and uh, second generation live in the side building and the back rooms are for unmarried women. Uh, those, the daughters, uh, they live there and uh, the, they are the farthest to the, to the entrance because, um, you know, in the uh, late imperial Chinese society, unmarried girls, um, you know, did not um, go out of their house very often, and they live in the very back. So show you some, <clears throat> um, you know, four major layers of courtyard. There is a transitional courtyard, front, co front ritual courtyard, uh, the rear residential courtyard, and there's a back courtyard for the female member. Um, and then there are smaller side uh, courtyards, side yards for utility, uh, utility purposes. The eastern section often has the kitchen um, and uh, <clears throat> as well as the, um, the toilet and the storage. And the western part uh, often has a home school um, and uh, the guard for the house, for those well-to-do family. 
Um, so this is very different from the Western kind of architecture, like the Roman atrium house that also has courtyard, but the Roman courtyard looks more like, you know, some something carved out of a block, like the Tianjin style in Chinese courtyard. The Chinese Northern style courtyard house, a Heyuan style house, is more like a courtyard formed by those small individual blocks that were connected by uh, corridors to form a space. And the Chinese northern courtyard are more horizontal, more open to sky. And the Western um, Roman courtyard, as well as the uh, Southern Chinese Tianjin style courtyard um, are more like a hole in a solid block. <coughs> they are more vertical. Um, so this is the entrance. And uh, after that, there is another entrance. And uh, this is the um, first courtyard. Just looking back to that entrance, to the second door, the middle gate. And the uh, corridors connecting different part of the room. Uh, so that they can travel from one room, one building to another without being exposed to weather. <coughs> and the rear courtyard, <coughs> um, the head of the household would live in the north room that is <coughs> opening to uh, sunshine. And uh, show you another corner of the uh, courtyard. <coughs> so this one is um, from you know the northern Chinese residential architecture, or basically this kind of Heyuan style. And this one is from uh, Shanxi province. So the previous one is from Beijing. This one is from Shanxi province, which is here. Uh, but they have the same kind of principle. Um, of those open courtyard. Uh, <clears throat> show you a Shanxi uh, mansion, which were built in the 19th century, belonging to a banker's family. So this is a rich merchant's family. Uh, multiple courtyard courtyards. And they were all connected by a central alley. And that's from that central alley, you can enter different courtyard. Uh, and there is also a garden here. At the end, uh, well, this is the entrance, right? This is the entrance. At the end of that alley is a small shrine. So there, that is a shrine and entrance to those multiple courtyard. And here we have a garden. So here we are standing, you know, looking at that direction, looking at the shrine at the end of the alley and the gate to those separate courtyards. Show you some detail and uh, <clears throat> um, beautiful carvings, brick carving and, uh, um, and wooden doors and furniture. So each door is different. Um, Shanxi province use a lot of brick for masonry structure. And they also construct those arches for their doorway. And uh, brick carvings, um, you know, a small, uh, small porch. Um, <clears throat> This one is in the, uh, this one has a, you know, two level, is a two level building. So um, in this, the, this mansion, um, the load bearing brick walls allows the, um, you know, the construction of multi-story building. And uh, they have sometimes a unique kind of roof style. And in this case, it is 
basically a single slope. It's just a sloping at one direction, and um, which is asymmetrical and uh, not often seen in the Beijing area, but quite um, common for Shanxi province. Another detail in the wall. So um, Yunnan province, there's you know the same courtyard style house can have very different different um, architectural um, formation. And this one is from southwestern part of China, from this area actually. And it also used the um, the Heyuan style, the courtyard style, where you know those buildings are basically separate. And uh, this belonged to a ethnic um, ethnic group known as the Bai um, nationality, right? From the city of da, Dali. And um, <clears throat> um, the color feature for the Bai um, ethnic architecture is white. So they use a lot of white washed wall and uh, with the kind of a southern style um, raised curve pointing with the eave pointing pointing up. Um, wood carving for those for the doors. And um, now let's look at the Skywell style. Skywell um, courtyard, you know, their courtyards are significantly smaller and they often looks you know, like a um, empty space created by carving um, a constructed block from the center. Um, and they often have, uh, you know, for the Tianjin style courtyard house, um, multi-story is the norm. They often have two stories and um, the base level for ventilation and the upper story for um, sleeping chambers and their courtyard are um, used more as a collection for water than for activity. So as you can see in the middle here, we have, we have a cistern for collection of water. <clears throat> and uh, some very beautiful villages um, formed by a collection of these Tianjin style courtyard. This is the in Anhui province uh, called the Hongcun um, from the uh, Yixian County. Um, the village was mostly built in the early 15th century. So some really old house can be found here. Solid wall and um, a bridge. And notice the relationship between the building and the courtyard, right? So this is why it, they are called the Skywell, Tianjin. So very different from the horizontal northern courtyard as represented by <laughs> Beijing and, uh, and the Forbidden City. Um, yeah, this very small alley. And this one is also from Anhui province, a very old village. So I'm going to show you um, more quickly of these images. So these are from the same um, same province, same region, and uh, a lot of water surfaces um, used for for mainly for uh, as a drainage system and um, for washing, not for drinking. So this is another. Uh, place very close to Shanghai, uh, featuring those small alley, tiny 
exterior window, everything is open to the sky well. And um, canal provide um, a, a major transportation uh, system for those for those uh, water town uh, using those kind of sky well style courtyard house. Um, <clears throat> another one from the uh, Zhejiang province. So this one belonged to a very rich family, uh, powerful official retired uh, to his homeland and built this mansion. And the gate looks like a memorial archway filled with wall, uh, but the architectural image is really um, in reality a, a memorial archway. And uh, a central um, ritual hall and a beautiful carving representing the Southern style architecture turning those architectural details into figurative decoration, uh, similar to the Fujian province treatment of Buddhist temple. I um, just want to show you this nice kind of wood carving. So uh, we don't have that much time to look at, look at these in, in great detail, but I think just by showing uh, these images give you a sense of diversity in traditional Chinese architecture. So this is another province in Jiangxi province, right? Uh, Fujian province again. This is what I call the group courtyard. So here, the courtyard does not belong to an individual family, belong to multiple families. You know, they are, they are divided like the slice of a pizza into different apartments. And each family um, has uh, a slice with rooms on all four stories. There's a first, second, third, and a fourth story. So uh, they were the family uh, space in each family were uh, arranged vertically. The first level was mostly for storage Second level, like the living room and for ritual activity. Uh, third level for male sleeping chamber. Fourth level for female uh, sleeping chamber. Um, and uh, so the privacy from bottom to top became greater and greater. Just like in the Beijing courtyard, it is from the south to north. And here in the grouped courtyard, it is from bottom up. The central uh, courtyard provided the collective uh, ritual uh, ground for the performance of rituals. And uh, sometimes they have a family sh shrine in the middle. Another one of these grouped courtyards. Um, there are also some sub subterranean cave dwelling where rooms were created by digging into the hill, the side of a hill. And sometimes of those cave rooms were combined with courtyard forming this very uh, you know uh, organic living environment uh, kind of a fully harmonized with with nature and sometimes the um, the living ground is lower than the natural ground so you need to go down to reach the living ground the courtyard so they first dig a pit in the ground and then create rooms from the side. So these areas are very dry. So you don't need to worry about flooding. Um, in those wet region, like in South China, they wouldn't cre create house like this. Um, but here it's so dry, you never run the risk of having a flooding to submerge their room. That never happened. This is in the Western Henan province, which is a very dry prep province. And so um, the living ground is actually lower than the farmland. Farmland is above. Uh, so, um, so they have those walls surround that pit. Otherwise, you know, one might fall into someone's backyard 
while walking in the field. So those are in, in the Henan province and uh, southern uh, Zhejiang province. So that's a dry region, that area. So there were also stilt dwelling in southwestern China where people were elevated from ground. These are for the wet area, uh, a lot of rain and a lot of snakes. Uh, so the, their ground are elevated. So these belong to the Dai ethnic group, which has more linguistic and, and uh, cultural connection with the Thai people in Thailand. And uh, show you some more stilt dwelling um, in, in southwestern Guizhou province, which is just next to Yunnan. And uh, show you quickly, right? Stilt, very literal. All right, so thank you very much. And thank you, thank you for your patience.